Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. So we are already gone through trace tables and some of its examples from the book. And in this video, we are going to talk about topic 7.8 of your book, Identifying Errors in Algorithms. And this, this is also a continuity of the trace tables. Why? Because here we will see that how trace tables and test data help us to identify errors in the given flowchart or pseudocode. So look at this. When we did activity 7.12 previously, uh, in the previous video, there was some result of it. So at that time, I already mentioned it. But now, because the topic is identifying errors in algorithms, that's why I'm going to mention this again, that when we did activity 7.12, we had the test data, 400, 800, 190, 170, 300, 110, 600, 150, 130, and 900. And remember that this flowchart helps you to find out the highest and the lowest number in your test data. So manually, if we see the test data, then the largest value here is 900 that needs to be identified by the flowchart as the highest value. And the other one is for the smallest value, we see that 110. 110 is the smallest value in our given test data that needs to be identified by this flowchart. So look at your result. Once you are done with this test data, in your output you can see that the highest value is 900 but the smallest value is 100. It is not 110. It means that there is some error in this flowchart. Why? Because it is not identifying the smallest value in your given test data. So this is how you can identify errors that whether the flowchart is working the way it should or not. Is it fulfilling the purpose or not? Now, we will do another activity in which we will see that what is the error going to be after the dry run of this flowchart again by using a negative test data. So look at activity 7.15. Use a trace table and some negative test data to record another dry run of the pseudocode or flowchart. We are going to use the same flowchart here to identify the error, but here the test data is negative now. We are going to consider all the negative values. So what I have mentioned here, this is my test data. You can select any of your negative test data values. Uh, here I have selected minus 22. Look at here. For my test data, I have selected all the negative values. Minus 22, minus 15, minus 4, minus 29, minus 7, minus 35, minus 2, minus 40, minus 23, and minus 12. Look at here, the question says that you have to consider negative test data. That's why I have selected all the negative values. You can select all negative values, but your values can be different from mine. It doesn't matter. The only thing is we need to find out that how the pseudocode is going to work for the negative test data. Okay, so let's start working considering the first value of our test data, which is minus 22. Look at here in the pseudocode, the initial values for variable A, B, C are already being mentioned here. So that is what you have written in the table also. That the value of A is initiated with 0, B has 0 value and C has a 100 value. Then you have another variable X. This is for your input data and this is going to be your output. The final result where you will be having two values, one for the highest and the one for the lowest value. You will print on the screen the highest and the lowest value in your test data. Now quickly see the first value of your test data is minus 22. Remember that the test data values are going to be stored in the variable x. So quickly write down minus 22 in the column x here. Now we will check for two conditions here. 
minus 22 is greater than the value of b which is 0. Is minus 22 greater than 0? No. Since it is known, no need to go here. Go down and check for the next condition. Is minus 22 less than the value in C which is 100? Yes, this is true. When it is true, go here and assign the value of x to variable C. So, what you will do, you will assign minus 22 to variable C and also write down in the trace table minus 22. This is done. After that, we will increment the value of A. A had a previous value 0. 0 plus 1 becomes 1. Put 1 in the table. Now, look at this. A less than 10. Yes. Here, this condition is true. The value of A is 1, which is less than 10. So, when this condition is true, you will go up and do for the next test data. Okay. Okay. So, the next test data we have is minus 15. So, let's put the value of minus 15 in variable x. Now, let's see if minus 15 is greater than the value of b, which is 0. No, it's not greater than 0. That's why don't no need to be here. Go down and check for the next condition. Is minus 15 less than minus 22? You have to consider the, uh, the last modified value of variable c, which is minus 22 in the previous iteration. So, check for this condition. Is minus 52 less than minus 22? No, we know that in negative values, the value that has a smallest magnitude is the largest one. So, minus 15 is largest and minus 22 is the smallest here. So, this condition is false. Minus 22 is not greater than minus 15. Here, we will go down and we will increment the value of A. So, A is... Now, 1 plus 1, which is 2. Let's put the value of 2 in the trace table. Now, go down, see this condition. A is 2. It is not 10 since the condition is true. So, go up and do the working for next iteration. Now, the third value of your test data is minus 4. Let's put the value minus 4 in column X. Now, let's see if minus 4 is greater than 0. No, it's not greater than 0. No need to come here. Go down and see. Is minus 4 less than minus 22? This is again wrong. Minus 4 is greater than minus 22. It's not less than minus 22. So, no need to go here. Go down and increment the value of A. So, it is 2 plus 1 now, which is 3. Let's put the value 3 in your trace table. See the condition. Is A less than 10? Yes, A has a value 3, which is less than 10. Go up. Go for the next iteration. Okay, so the next value of your test data is minus 29. Let's put it in column X. Okay, minus 29. Now, see if minus 29 is greater than 0, which is wrong, false. Go down. Is minus 29 less than minus 22? Yes, this is true now. Minus 29 is less than minus 22 because both are negative values. And in negative values, the value with the greater magnitude is less than the value with the smallest magnitude. So, 29 minus 29 is less than minus 22. Since condition is true, we go here and we save minus 29 in variable C. So, let's put minus 29 in variable C and go down, increment the value of A. A has a value 3, 3 plus 1 is going to be 4. Now, see this condition. Is A less than 10? 
Yes, A is less than 10. Why? Because A has a value 4 now. Okay, go for the next iteration. Now, the next value we have is minus 7. Let's put minus 7 in column X. Okay, now check for the conditions. This is minus 7 here. Is minus 7 greater than 0? It's false. Go down. Is minus 7 less than minus 29? The new value for variable C is minus 29. So we are seeing minus 7 is not less than minus 29. The condition is false. So we will go down and we will increment the value of A. So A has a previous value 4. 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 now. Let's put 5 in column A. Check for this condition. Is A less than 10? Which is true. Since it is true, so let's go up and do working for next iteration. The next value of our test data is minus 35. Let's put it in column X minus 35. And check for the conditions. Is minus 35 greater than 0? No, it's not greater than 0. Go down. Is minus 35 less than minus 29? Which is true. Yes. The condition is true. Go here. Save the value minus 35 in variable C and also put it in your trace table. Now, go down and increment the value of A. A had a value 5. 5 plus 1 is going to be 6. Put it in the trace table. Check for the condition. The condition is true. A is less than 10. So, go up and do working for next iteration. The next value of your test data is minus 2. Let's put minus 2 here and also here. Now check if minus 2 is greater than 0. It's wrong. False. Go down. Is minus 2 less than minus 35? This is also false. Go down. Increment the value of A. A had a value 6. 6 plus 1 is going to be 7. Put 7 here. Now go down, check for the condition. It is true. A is less than 10. Go up and do working for the next iteration. The next value of your test data is minus 40. Let's put minus 40 in X and check for the conditions. Is minus 40 less greater than 0, which is false? Go down. Is minus 40 less than minus 35? Yes, this is true. Minus 40 is more negative than minus 35. So it is less. Go to yes and change the value of C with minus 40. Also change in trace table. And now increment the value of A. A had a value 7. 7 plus 1 is going to be 8. Is A less than 10? Yes, A has value 8 which is less than 10. Go up and do working for the next iteration. The next value of your test data is minus 23. Let's put minus 23 in X and check for the two conditions. Minus 23 is greater than 0, which is false. Go down. Minus 23 is less than minus 40. This is also false. Go down. Increment the value of A. He had a value 8, 8 plus 1, 9. Put it in the trace table. Check for the condition. Yes, A is still less than 10. Why? Because A is 9 right now. Now go up and do the working for the last iteration. Okay, so the last test data value is minus 12. Let's put it here in X. And check for the two conditions. Is minus 12 greater than 0? False. Go down. Is minus 12 less than minus 40? False. Go down. Increment the value of A. 9 plus 1, which is 10. Let's put 10 in column A. Now, when you are going to check for the condition, this condition is false now. 
a is less than 10. No, a is not less than 10 because a is 10 now. a is equal to 10. Since a is equal to 10, so this condition becomes false and you go down. When you go down, you in output two values, the values of variable b and c. So look at your trace table. The value of variable b is not modified uh, with this test data. So it is initially set to 0. It remains 0. Whereas the value of variable c is modified and it has a value minus 40. This algorithm is basically designed, uh, designed in such a way that variable b is going to store the highest value of your test data and variable c is going to have the smallest value of your test data. This is what we have seen uh, in previous examples also when we worked uh, through this particular flowchart. But in your result, when you see the output, this b, the variable b has a value 0, which is not a part of your test data. Look at here. If I see the test data, the highest value that needs to be identified by the flowchart is minus 2. Look at here. Because all of these test data values are negative, so you will consider the less negative value, which is minus 2, as your highest value. Whereas variable b is not modified, b has a zero value which is initially been set by the pseudocode itself. So this is the big error that we have identified over here that this pseudocode is not identifying the highest value when your test data is negative. Whereas variable c has minus 40 which is the smallest value in your test data. This one is correct. This is the smallest value and it is being identified by the pseudocode. But the highest value is not identified by the pseudocode. And what is the reason? The reason is very simple. It is all because of the initial values that are being set in these variables B and C. Variable B has an initial value 0 and variable C has an initial value 100 which says that the, it is, the pseudocode is only going to work if the test data is within the range of 0 till 100. So this is what is the drawback of the pseudocode that any other values that are not in the range of 0 to 100 you cannot identify the smallest and the highest values or there will be error. If the values are going to be greater than 100 or the values are going to be less than 0, then the result will be incorrect. Other than that, the algorithm is only going to work for the range of test data that will be within 0 to 100. So this is the error and we can correct it by changing this condition, uh, sorry, these initial values. If you want to increase your range, you can change the initial values of B and C. So this is how we can modify the pseudocode. This is all about identifying errors in algorithm using trace table and test data. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we are going to have another example. Stay tuned, stay connected and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Bye-bye.